saved may not be all we've been thinking it's cracked up to be. Hmm. And it's time for another unbuckled bumpy ride with your guide, the stark raving lunatic himself. I'm Jim. Let's jump right in again. Welcome to my podcast based on my brand new book, available on Amazon, Live Life Lean, L-E-A-N. It's a year-long guide to gratitude and our daily grind. The book that combines some timeless wisdom from a whole lot of the world's wiser people with the reflections, reactions, and wisecracks of the guide's author, me. And it guides you, the reader, through the simplest system for a happy, healthy, authentic, and genuinely grateful everyday experience. I urge you to get the book. Of course I do. I wrote it. It's either at Amazon or at my website, amperage.com. A-M-M-P-U-R-A-G-E. But even without it, let's make next week better than last, our next year better than the past, and get started now with today's episode of... Well, how did I get here? Why am I still here? Okay, but... How did I get here asking myself, why am I still here? Okay, for all the folks who feel that, hang in there with me here, folks. For all y'all out there who feel that the greatest gift is their salvation, I'm going to argue that it may have competition. Hang in there. Why? What? Why am I saying this? Listen, I'm saved. Whatever that means to the individual, I know what it personally means to me. And I know there's not a day that I am not amazingly grateful for it. Now I'm saved. So if the most important thing was me getting saved in order to go to heaven, why am I still here? Maybe it's because getting saved is the easy part. <laughs> yeah, duh, of course it is. Because, I mean, what work, strain, sacrifice, what effort did I have to do to get saved? I'm sure I did a lot of stuff battling against the current and the tide before trying to do stuff my own way. Still guilty of that. But what work, effort, stress, and strain did I have to do to get saved? Nothing. God did all the work. Now that I am saved, though, what am I going to do with it? Now, maybe that is the greatest gift. It's a gift that I'm entrusted with. It's a gift that we are entrusted with. We are entrusted with the gift of the gift. It's kind of like your parents giving you, say, the freedom of a car, okay? And it's a car that you couldn't have without them, all right? Remember being younger, they give you the freedom of a car, give it to you. You could not have that car without them. The thing is, once they legally give it to you, now they've grounded you away from it. And they did so because they said they were protecting you from it because they didn't feel that they could trust you or trust the rest of the world with you having that freedom, with you walking around in this world, driving around in this world with that freedom. So yes, you have the car, but they need to protect you and keep you away from what could happen as a result. See, man, that would suck. You have been entrusted with being here after your acceptance, after your salvation, and perhaps that is our biggest gift, the gift of the gift. The fact that God trusts us to do right, not perfect, but do right with and in appreciation to Him. Hmm. Now I hope some of you are getting where we're going with this. Salvation is a really big thing, and I mean big, B-I-G, capitals all, big thing. The number of times salvation is actually referenced in the Bible is about 160, approximately 160 times. And it, you know, it depends upon the version of the Bible in question. 
You want to know what's referenced in the Bible more than that? For an average of over 270 times in those same versions? Disciple. Disciple. Disciple the noun. Disciple the verb. The action. The act. Disciple. The instruction to be. Disciple. The instruction to do. The disciple is told to do. To be. The dooby dooby doo. <laughs> All right, I'm just being frank with you. Stop. You're beautiful. All right, let's get back to it. So why am I still here? And honestly, after that rambling, you may be asking yourself that very question. I've accepted God, except I'm still down here. I'm not there in heaven, in the divine place. Am I biding my time? Did I do something wrong or not do something wrong? Right? Or right enough? Or enough right? Oh, maybe. You just maybe. You and I, you have a lot that you get to do before you get to go. Not got to do in order to get through the gates. It's not a prerequisite. But you get to do now in the right order before spending forever on the other side of those gates. Why is that so important? Well, honestly, for heaven's sake, how do you know 100% for certain that what you can do here and now, well, you might not even be able to do over there on the other side of those gates. It might just be how it works. Speaking of works, it's not about works, and it's not just about worship, uh, and, and both of those are really, really important to God. The Bible says so. But once you've experienced salvation, my experience, our experience, your experience is to disciple. It's a discipline. Ooh, that's a harsh word. It's a discipline. And it's why we're still here. Once we hear that there's more to reality than just being here. I'll let you figure out which words were spelled H-E-A-R and H-E-R-E in those last couple sentences. <laughs> Salvation is God's truly great gift to us. But like all great gifts, are you, are we, am I, are we supposed to cling to it, sit on it, and suffocate it? Are we supposed to put it out there, pay it forward? Supposed to pass it on and praise the passage of time, the passage of time between the first day we got that gift when we invited God into our hearts, a.k.a. salvation, and the last day, the very last day that we even have the chance to invite His other children into that loving reality, into our loving reality, into our lives, and ultimately, just invite them in. Use your gift. Share your gift. Grow and show the damn gift. But don't just get by because you got your gift. And speaking of salvation, I find it really interesting that every year, our businesses, the places that we go, our private enterprises, stores and shops are infiltrated willingly and welcomedly, if that is a word, welcomedly, welcomedly, I'm going to make it a word for the day. Word of the day. Okay. They are welcomed willingly and then infiltrated by an organization with officers of military rank and title. Think about it. With a mission that involves, if they choose to accept it, disturbing the peace, separating you from your hard-earned income and money, and thrusting their organizational beliefs onto everyone without selection, without bias, and without asking permission. Hmm. And we invite them in. And the shot across the bow of our seasonal sea sailing ships, well, that comes from the Salvation Army. They work to do good in the name of salvation, not to get saved in the name of doing good. One of the quotes from their mission, its ministry is motivated by the love of God. Its mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and to meet human needs in His name without discrimination. Note, its main mission is not just to hang out with everyone else who's already saved, but to help out and to hand out and meet all humans in need without discrimination. So, get saved and enlist. That's their way. Or, enlist and get saved. But either way, then is when your mission, then is when your purpose, then is when your calling comes a calling. 
we all kind of are becoming part of a salvation army. So yeah, trying to avoid the whole issue of salvation and acceptance, which is a whole another podcast episode. But I'm, right now I'm kind of avoiding it with justification, okay? And avoiding it about good works and the argument that good works equal outcome and whether or not that actually happens likely is, that might not come out so good. But don't worry, because after you're saved, oh baby, you you got a lifetime full of good works opportunities ahead of you. Honestly, those are probably the reason you're still here, here having this discussion, here listening to this podcast. Don't like it? Good. Go. Get out of here. And go add to the world around you. But not before you remember to jot it down in your Live Life Lean Guide. And next time, next time a bell rings, look for your chance to do good things. Thank you, Salvation Army volunteers. And now, more words of wisdom to wow your socks off from the Live Life Lean Guide itself. Entry number 247. The saints are the sinners who keep on trying. Robert Louis Stevenson. And the guide's point of view on this? Yeah, never understood the whole sainthood thing. I mean, a label for humans, given by humans, for acting almost inhuman. So what do you think about this? Using the Live Life Lean Guide system. What have you learned lately that's new? What have you earned that wasn't just given to you? Where have you added to the world outside of just you? Now be grateful for all that. Reflect on it, respect it, and navigate somewhere next. Thank you for listening. I hope you're enjoying your copy of the Live Life Lean, L-E-A-N guide. Enjoying it almost as much as I did creating it. And if you don't have a copy yet, go on over to Ampurage.com or Amazon and get started today experiencing the amazing power of knowing every day is literally yours to be grateful about, and you need never feel unfulfilled again. I'm Jim Hall, and until next time, good health, God bless, and now go get a little dirty learning something new, earning what's not given to you, adding to this crazy world that we share, and navigating your way to something new and next.